Hey everybody, Jessica here, and in this tutorial I am going to show you um, how I took this stock image of a cupcake from this into this, like I have on my display images. So it's really easy, and I'm going to show you some of my tips and tricks to make sure that it goes really fast. So I have got my um, stock image here as a ping on my on a layer. And this stock also came as like an EPS or something like that for Illustrator. But rather than open it up in Illustrator, um, what I'll do, usually stock comes with a ping. If, um, if they have a vector, usually they'll have a ping. Or I'll just open up the Illustrator in, uh, into Photoshop or whatever. But a lot of times, um, like you could open it up in Illustrator and export it as layers to a Photoshop but I find that it's quite easier in this instance just to bring this ping in here and I'm going to select these different color zones using my color, my color selection and I can work a lot faster so saving myself a lot of time um, that way so and plus sometimes that when it exports it like that it's like a million different layers and you have to reassemble it so it's not a good use of your time so I'm going to go ahead and put my foreground color to black so I can see very easily what I'm doing. And I'm going to take, go up here and get my magic wand tool. And maybe I'll, my default tolerance is probably 15. So I am going to grab my light pink um, in here. And I'm going to make sure contiguous is off right up here because I want it to select all the light pink and put it on one layer. And then I am going to create a new layer, get my paint bucket tool over here on the left and fill that layer and deselect it and I'm done. So good enough. There we go. Let's take my magic wand again, select, make sure I'm selecting that layer and then I'm going to select the medium pink and I'll put that, uh, Let's put one a new layer above the last one and same thing grab your paint bucket paint it in all right we'll deselect and one other little tip I want to give you is I sometimes I write myself actions and I'm going to organize my actions and uh, try to make and make these available to my subscription members because I could do that for all the different times, but one thing that I, I'm all about little time savers. One thing that I did was um, to repeat that over and over again. So this is an action that I do all the time. So I made myself a little action that's new layer fill from selection. So every time I make a selection, if I want, I can push this action and it'll automatically make a layer and fill it for, based on my selection. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to select these highlight here and let's go up on because I want it on my top layer. So I'll click layer four and then I'm going to click play on my action and it's going to make a new layer based on that. So just doing the same thing that I had already did, but I made an action of it because I'm all about saving time. You know, we, do, we don't want to do repetitive things if we don't have to. So I'm going to go back to my cupcake layer. I'm going to select this dark pink layer and I'll hit play that's gonna fill that now I want to select the uh, the yellow same thing fill that make it its own layer and then I will go and get the stripes make it so now everything's good so we are good to go so now we have all these different elements all the different parts of it on separate layers so I'm going to hide those layers right now. I, what I did was I just selected all the layers and I right clicked here and I clicked show this layer and or you can hide that layer. So I hide all my layers. And now I'm going to go one by one and apply the effects. So let's turn on, let's start with the bottom this time just to be crazy. So I want this cone, the little waffle part on the bottom here. And it looks like this is a, this is one of my accent styles. So this was a very, very thick sort of effect here, but I wanted to use my little accent styles on the bottom. 
So what I did, let's select this part right here and I'm going to go to my styles and I am going to go to accents and I believe these were accents hmm, dark perhaps. It's hard to tell. Accents dark. Yeah, let's just go with dark. So we're going to put that below the stripes. And one thing that I noticed is that by default, my um, right now in my Photoshop, my shadows are at 90 degrees but I definitely prefer a 135 degree shadow. So I'm going to click here into my bevel emboss and I'm going to, this is one of the key parts of my styles here. Um, it's at 90 right now here on the angle. If you look angle 90, it says at the top, this part right here, I'm going to click 135 and that's going to be a better angle. And I'm going to hit okay. And now all of my angles are going to be um, 135. Now when I created these styles I didn't um, set them always to be at 135 because you know for your illustration I, I set them to use global light so that way if you change one style it will change all the styles angles and that's more important because not everybody wants it at 135 that's just my personal preference and um, so I definitely left it to global light because that way if I change my shadow, it will change every shadow on the thing and it will still look realistic. So changing that to 135, I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to go to the stripes layer above it. Turn that on and then I'm going to go to accents light. Perfect. That's the, that's the look that I was going for. Um, and I'll make sure that that stripes layer is above it. And so that way it looks like it has a cute cup and it's got these stripes on it and I think it's really fun. So the next thing let's turn on is, and I remember whenever I first created this, I played around with the layer order and all of this. So um, we're just going to turn on this medium pink here. Let's find that. There we go. And I'll just put this down here. And now since we have a dark background here, this is one of the darker styles, um, the darker backgrounds. We are going to, I'm going to go use my colored styles because why not? And I'm going to go to colored dark for darker backgrounds. So let's just play with that. I'm going to click it and then we can refine this later. So right now I'm kind of just going to turn these layers on and then we'll play with the order and possibly, you know, adjust the shadows if we want until we get really the thing that we um, want, uh, the effect that we want. So let's turn on the next layer here. This is the little slivers here. I'm going to go for color darkest. Why not? And then let's click on the next one, which is the pink. Let's go for colored medium. All right, maybe colored light even for a little more contrast. Not sure how I did it there. And then let's click on these. That the last part. Let's click colored light. No. Nope. Colored medium. No. Nope. Color. I think these could use color darkest. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. And I think. Let me, I'm going to go up to my top left, auto select the layer. I'm going to get this one here and maybe move it up. That looks cool. Everything looks, I like how that, that looks and I think it matches kind of um, what I did over on the other side. Let me click this, make sure it's colored darkest. Yep. Yeah. All right. So that's kind of how I did it. This isn't a red, but I'll show you how to change the color. But one thing that I noticed is there's just, um, I'm going to click on that light bit. There's a little bit of artifacts. That's the one thing is if you're using the selection tool, 
It might not be 100% precise. It, it had put some little artifacts here because it had selected a little bit. So I'm just going to take my eraser tool and I am going to just erase these. It's not a big deal, but that's kind of, sometimes you'll have a little thing like that if you're um, doing it kind of the fast way like I did and selecting it via the, um, the magic selector tool. So I'm not that bothered by it. And normally it still saves me a lot of time by using that method to convert them. So I'm quite pretty pleased with how it turned out. Let me put it 100, 100% here. And now the colored styles by default are red, but you might not want red. So, um, I am going to show you how to change the color. And so I'm gonna to go to this medium color here. I'm gonna expand the layer style and click on the top color overlay. And that's the one that um, controls the color. And you just click on here and you can just pick, scroll through and pick whatever color you want. I have it at 75% opacity because this is meant to look like baked goods, so I don't want it's the color so, so, so intense. And in this case, I think maybe I'll make kind of like a pinkish sort of cupcake, but I am going to go over here and make it slightly less saturated because if it was a real baked good or something, normally it wouldn't be, the color wouldn't be so, so saturated. So I'm going to go over here. And what I'll do is I'm going to copy and paste this color or I'm going to go down here to this um, number box here and I'm going to copy this so that I can paste it in my other one. So I'm going to click OK, check. I'll click here, go into my color overlay and then just paste that right there. So that way we can change all of the colors just like so. And then by clicking this, you don't um, you don't change any of the other settings. So it will literally just change the hue or the color. And do the same thing for this one. Paste. Okay, okay. And now I have a purpley, pinky sort of cupcake. And let's pull out my let's pull my original stock to the top. So instead of having just a regular old stock image, you've got this, you know, like this. Let's maybe put it right over it, which that's fine, you know, but sometimes we're looking to make something really cool. So you can take this and it really only take a few clicks and you've got this amazing dimensional sort of um, artwork here. And then to top it off, I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm going to roll down to one of my sprinkles here. And I will take my eyedropper tool here on the left, and I'm just gonna pick one of these hues up here from, the, from this cupcake. And I will throw a few sprinkles down. And let's go for my sprinkles layer style. There we go. Let me just, Maybe do that again. Then you can just play with it until you get it just how you like it. But we are gonna put a few sprinkles on that cupcake. And that looks so cool. So, and then you can even decorate it some more. You can use the brushes and make some cool sort of swirl effects and all of that. So that's a lot of fun. I hope you can see how easy it was that we took this stock image and with a few clicks, we can make this really cool artwork that really stands out and is really fun and exciting. So again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, put them in the comments or if you have something you want to see regarding this collection, um, just let me know.